this. It's video. This is Artichoke. This is the cafe at Artichoke. This is where we do these every week. We got to do video this time, and it's 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 a kind of a tease for a show that's coming up that we want to do out of here, and the Artichoke wants to do with us, and mostly with themselves. But welcome to Co Coffee Shop Conversations. This is fabulous. This is Cafe Artichoke, and look. <laughs> I have coffee. Two people at once. This has never happened before. <laughs> Cheers. L'chaim. Slancha. Hello. Kate Power, Steve Einhorn. Yes. Tom D'Antoni. Yeah, yeah, man. Tom. Great right. to be here. This is good. This is good. I'm glad yeah. to see you. Um, I, I don't know why you sort of get in on, on early on things that I do, but many, 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 many years ago, when you guys uh, were running the previous Artichoke up on Hawthorne, and I had just started doing Oregon Art Beach stories. Okay. Yours was the second one. And do you remember why I had to come out for, for the second shoot? You forgot to kiss. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at everything and going, wait a minute. We have to go back and have them kiss each other in the middle of the store. Well, it was a love story. It was. Oh, we'll do it right in the beginning <laughs> this time. Hey! <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Hey, it's how you. Are you? <laughs> And it really was perfect. It was really exactly what the story needed. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when we had a chance to do, because we always do one-on-ones. That was what the plan the po you know, of, of the podcast, because it was just audio, and you don't want to mix up voices and stuff like that. Matter of fact, that's why we had you on separately, which was really weird. Mm -hmm. um, but it worked. Yeah. And you can go search those on Oregon Music News right this minute, uh, and they'll still be there. So when, when we moved over here to, to, to Artichoke, and we had a chance to do some video and have it be, you know, more than one person. I said, well, it's Artichoke. <laughs> and who are two of my favorite people? Aww. Kate and Steve. Let's do that. So here we are. Yay. Yeah. yeah. Back in the sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're no stranger to this Artichoke either, are you? No, we've become quite familiar with it. It's really, really wonderful. Yeah. It's a great... Great place, great location. I love it. Um, our band, the Portlanders, uh, have played here several times, mm -hmm. and it's our favorite venue. Good. Yeah. I bet you say that to all the venues. <laughs> what? Well, we just pick one and we only play there. <laughs> <laughs> and all the others have closed. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is our residency, and the other guy, the. Kevin, Shea Johnson, and Mick Darty, who are also in our band, uh, were so amazed when we played the first show here at the great vibe. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of our old things, the, the bar and the signs and the drum and- The tables. The tables. Yeah, the I tables. bought these tables. The chairs. Yeah. I remember getting Where'd these you chairs. Buy them? Uh, I can't tell you that. Was, uh, they came in through the back door. Yeah, and they welcomed us like uh, old home week in such a big way. What else here is swag, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this capo. Yeah, but there is not a price tag hanging for my guitar. This is my guitar. That's good. Yeah. What is that guitar? It's a Santa Cruz guitar. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a beauty. So was it made in Santa Cruz? Santa Cruz, California, wow. by Richard Hoover. Uh huh. Yeah, and purchased at a local shop here in Portland, not Artichoke, but uh, oh no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Diversity is healthy. And what's yours? Mine's a Collings, and uh, I love it. I've had it for a long time, and uh, now we have kind of the perfect pair. They're really fun. You know, I was, you know, because as you know, I, don't, I, I, I make things up as, as we go along. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, my, that's my style. And I, thought, I was going to wait till we, you know, got into some other stuff before I asked you if you'd sing something. But it's so, like, frustrating sitting here just watching you hold these guitars and not <laughs> hearing you sing. You want, can, you, can you do a tune? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Good. Let's get these microphones where they're supposed to be. And since we're so close to the kitchen, maybe we'll do a kitchen song. Is that, okay. what, is that what we'll do? I love that song. All right. Okay. Let me just turn a little bit Try not here. to bang too much. Okay. A one, two, three, one, two, three.
over there Rock and you rock in your chair There's such a beat to you I overhear you talk second cup of coffee, I would have remembered the second verse. <laughs> this was the short version. <laughs> well, nobody knew that. Nobody knows that, right? No, Except no, now. Not, now they do. Now they do. Well, spilled the beans. You spilled perfection the beans. is really not the goal. <laughs> Maybe they'll go out and buy the record now. It's for the mystery hey, verse. Is that available? <laughs> <laughs> for the mystery verse, yeah. yeah. Hey, just slide a little bit. Yeah. Sure. There you go. You can get everything that we have on CD Baby. Ah. Yeah, it's okay. easy. And actually, with every uh, box of Tide detergent now, <laughs> has a, one of our CDs in it. That's great. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It must be so clean. <laughs> it's clean music. <laughs> if you're not careful, you might get a ukulele with it. He's already got one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, geez. What's the story of that song? <laughs> Kitchen Waltz? Yeah. Oh, boy. Who wrote that? I wrote that song. Did you? And it was actually... Uh, it was just before Steve and I got together, actually, that I wrote it. Um, you really want this story? Yeah. OK. <laughs> so once upon a time, I was taking myself out uh, to hear Itzhak Perlman play at the Schnitzer. Mm -hmm. And I was by myself. And I was coming down the, in the parking lot. And I saw this old couple, probably well into their 80s, passing me by, holding hands. I was single at the time, 
And I looked at them and I thought, wow, that, that just looks so beautiful. I wish I could have that. Mm. And uh, pretty much had given up at that point on th that being <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> something that would happen. And I went to the concert and I sat in the uh, orchestra section and I felt like he was playing just with his one uh, friend from Romania on the piano. It was a beautiful concert, just the two of them. I felt like he was playing to me all night. And then I went home and uh, the next morning I got up and I wrote that song in my kitchen just, just thinking about this old couple and maybe what it might have been like for her in her kitchen as she's cooking or doing the dishes and watching the old man in a rocking chair kind of snoozing away and that kind of love. And um, that's where the song came from. And it was very soon after that that our romance started. So I felt it was a, a lucky song. And you've been singing the song ever since. Yes, sir. We have, <laughs> yeah. Tw uh, 25 years ago this October was the time that Kate and I, it was a birthday party at her house. Was it your birthday or someone mm -hmm. else's birthday? Yeah. It was mine. And uh, we went out into the backyard uh, with our guitars and uh, started singing together. And uh, we've been together ever since, wow. singing songs. Wow. Yeah. Just it's an automatic thing. click there, huh? Yeah, really right was. Right away, really musically, was. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never had to talk Harmonies about fell that. in and, yeah. Just I love to harmonize completely. with Kate Power. Oh, really? Well, really. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I like harmonizing with you pretty well, yeah, too. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, we got lucky. Yeah. It's pretty rare. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Well, it seemed like this, this uh, spring, everybody was getting sick. Ah. I had Lewis Payne, the great organ player. Yeah. He came, I mean, he had a heart attack and he came in here and still did the podcast. I couldn't believe uh, it. So what is wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You just got, you had a heart attack two days ago and you're sitting there going, oh, the show goes going on. Yeah, that that's stuff. right. But, you never miss a gig. Right? But you, you're, yeah. you're overseas and kaboom. Kaboom. So what, what, what happened? Uh, well, we got to Ireland two days later than we expected mm -hmm. because our flight was just canceled. We got to Portland Airport and there was no one at the counter to receive us. Um, we finally got to, to Ireland. We flew into Shannon and uh, we had scheduled a ukulele class in this village of the village of Kinvara where we love to go. We have lots of friends there mm -hmm. and our friends set up a, a class and uh, I shipped a bunch of ukes ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got there. I ate a giant Irish fry breakfast <laughs> Uh, which consists of all kinds of horrible things that I will not mention here in Portland, <laughs> like Oregon. Pretty. But there was nothing gluten-free or, yeah. Uh, but I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. And I ordered the big, yeah, give me the big one. And, uh, and I drank some coffee and uh, we had the class. I went out and had a pint of Guinness that evening. And the next day I didn't feel so good. And, uh, but Kate's three sisters and husbands all arrived. We went there to have this big birthday celebration for her sister, and I uh, just didn't feel so good for the two weeks we were there. And the morning uh, before we were supposed to, uh, the day before we were supposed to fly back home to Portland, I really wasn't feeling good. Oh and we went to see the local doc, and she sent me up to the city of Galway, where uh, they did a CAT scan and saw that my appendix was this big. Yo! We like and to call it the Minotaur. The Minotaur. Wow. It's supposed to be that big, but yeah. it was this big. And the doctor said, we gotta take that out now. And uh, I got great care. I was in the Mother Teresa ward for four days. And uh, the doctor removed my ugly appendix. Jeez. And we got to spend an extra two weeks in the town of Kinvaro. Two weeks? Two weeks. Wow. Yeah. It takes a long time to recover from this. Yeah, this was There's... ugly, and uh, the doctor said, you should not get on that plane, and I'm glad I didn't. And you didn't gig while you were recovering, no. did you? <laughs> Louis Payne, listen to this, will you please? We did, we did sing and play the last night in Kinvara, two weeks well, after the different. surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. While well, you were recovering, I would go down and sing a little. Yeah. But there, you don't even need to bring your instrument. It's all shanos and unaccompanied singing and... Mm. 
just the locals. Shanos? Yeah, that's what What's they call that? it. It's just uh, it's the indigenous singing of the area, unaccompanied. Huh. So it's just the voice. So like you could be there in the pub with your Guinness in hand, uh -huh. and Tom, give us give us your song. And you maybe, wouldn't want to hear that. Maybe it's a funny you, you, song. You, you give us a song, Tom. <laughs> Come on. Okay, you want? It? Yeah. That's the, this is one I, that I play on a radio around the holidays every year. Okay. Matzo balls, matzo balls, and the chicken soup. <laughs> Mama so, makes you eat them so you, until, so, until your st stomach starts to pluke. Oi, matzo <laughs> balls, matzo balls, have another cup. If matzo balls don't kill you, your number isn't up. <laughs> wow. How would that go over in the pub? I I'm like it. Sure. You sound a lot like Mel Brooks. You have a Mel Brooks tone in your voice. I like that. Uh-oh. Hey, my phone's, I turned that off. It's Hey, it's life. Yes, it, it is. Life. Now Modern it is, life. yeah. That was one thing I noticed the whole time we were there in a whole month mm -hmm. of being right across the street from a school and everything. I only saw one child texting on really? a phone once. <laughs> and they were joyful and looked you in the eye and people were talking to each other instead wow. of talking to these machines. Huh. Yeah, it was quite it was refreshing. Charming. By the way, that, uh, that song, the matzo ball song is yes. from an album called Let's Put the Hook Back in Hanukkah. <laughs> I think you guys should do the matzo ball song. I'm already do, looking huh? up the lyrics, yeah. <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send you, it's on YouTube. Yeah. I have one, but I'm not gonna sing it. It's called What Do You Do If You're Young and White and Jewish? <laughs> Shel Silverstein. Uh, Shel Silverstein. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there you were, recovering in Ireland. Yeah. And wow. you did. And, uh, one of, the, one of the amazing things that happened, a couple of our students wrote to say, listen, you guys, you don't know what this is going to cost. If you're from out of the country, you have to pay for everything up front, everything. Wow. And they said to us, well, this looks like a CAT scan and yeah, yeah. probably surgery and yada, da, da, da. And I wasn't sure uh, what was going to get covered. I still don't really know. Yeah. I, I sent in the, the, all the receipts and everything and haven't heard back yet. But two of our students asked if they could put a GoFundMe together uh -huh. for us and I had just also heard someone had spent $75,000 to helicopter somebody somewhere and you know just the trouble you can get in yeah. and I did not get travel insurance this time so I think I will do that from now on but I never had and so um, before even realizing it we we said okay and I decided to write it so that people would know it was in our voice it wasn't coming from a third party and people were so responsive it was like holy cow it was like all of Portland was there with us wow. everybody from our past people we barely knew people that we'd known many years ago everybody sending these beautiful notes Tons of money. People were posting it on Facebook, and really, people that we don't know sent money yeah. to the it was fund. Miraculous. It was miraculous. So all of a sudden, was. there was fifty thousand dollars, and wow. it was all from friendship and the beauty from artichoke. You know, I mean, I watched him working with people every day, and it was a beautiful sight. It was yeah. really, really fun. But most of those people you never see again, and all of a sudden here they all were with us in Ireland saying, hold on, don't worry, it's gonna be okay, we're with you. And it was just amazing. And so even though in the end we put out a bunch of, you know, scrambled to find dough and, and paid it all up front and everything, in the end we ended up with more money than this cost which I still don't know exactly what it's going to be that, yeah. that we got back, but it was still, they gave us more than we needed. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is pay it forward, mm -hmm. and Artichoke has, has graciously agreed to administer a new trust, the Artichoke Trust, wow. and it'll be as, they, as people get in trouble like we were, and we weren't sure whether we were okay or not, mm -hmm. but there was nothing about the situation, nobody in Portland was gonna let us have a, have any problems. And they, they really came through for us more than we needed. And so we wanna pass that on. And so we're having, uh, we booked the Alberta Rose Theater mm -hmm. for uh, Sunday, October 20th, mm -hmm. for the donors and friends. Um, it, it is officially full, it's sold out. Wow. Um, 400 seats. And uh, maybe some of those people won't come and people can get in, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It'll be, but it's gonna be a love fest that night. Who's playing? It's just Steve and me. Really? Yeah. yeah. We're wow. just, we're gonna play and we're gonna tell stories of the whole adventure and the adventures of you know, our life in Portland. But yeah. it'll, be, it'll be a really special evening uh, in this deep community with a lot of those people there. Uh, 
to, you know, be together over this beautiful thing that's that this exchange we've had and give them an opportunity to know about what their contribution turned into and we'll we'll put the leftover bucks in the tr the foundation if anybody wants to throw in anything great but the concert's free and it's uh we're thrilled to be able to do it and we're so thankful wow. and hopefully this will be very like the Jeremy Wilson Foundation in yeah, a way, only yeah. they won't be confined to musicians necessarily. Uh -huh. Maybe the sound guys get some trouble. Maybe uh -huh. there's a kid who really needs a ticket to go audition for something. Uh -huh. Something, Whatever is important at the moment, the people here will know because uh, the heart of this place is really good. Uh -huh. And they will uh, use the money as, uh, as it's needed uh -huh. and it'll, grow and go forward with our thanks. Have any songs come out of this experience? <laughs> They're cooking. <laughs> That's funny. I, um, I was, uh, as Kate mentioned, I was in the Mother Teresa ward yes. of the Galway Hospital. Oh, yeah. And uh, she is one of the characters in one of, actually, the first song I ever wrote. Ever? I mentioned like Mother Teresa. Ago, so. Like 1970, well, when, when did that you write it? It would have it? been 1971. 71. Yeah. Before a lot of people were born that yes. would ever hear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so I, I will be singing my very first song at this concert <laughs> in honor of the Blessed Mother Teresa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, was she, you, you, did, you didn't say anything bad about her, no, did you? No, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Only no, good things. So positive. And we, we had a, I had a wonderful experience. Uh, in the middle of my second night in the hospital, uh, I was still doped up and I was, had IV uh, things coming out of my arms, a lot of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And a, a nurse came in at 2 a.m. and uh, said, excuse me, in that lovely Irish accent, Mr. Einhorn, I'm, I just here to change your IV. And I look up, I didn't have my readers on. And, I see her, her name tag says Donnell. I couldn't read her first name. And um, we had dear friends, we have dear friends. One, Michal O'Donnell passed away uh, a few years back. Um, but Michal lived here mm -hmm. and uh, brought his wonderful music, taught Kate how to play dad gad guitar. And his sister Trina also lived here for several years and uh, played with the band Night Noise. Mm -hmm. And uh, she continues to make great music. But I, their last name was O'Donnell and Needonnell. The women are Needonnell, the men are O'Donnell in the family. And I said to this nurse, you wouldn't, are you by any chance related to me, Holland, Trina? And she says, oh, they're me auntie and uncle. Oh, geez. <laughs> She's 31-year-old Deirdre Needonnell, who uh, was the niece of our dear friend. And not only did she come back the next morning to check up on me again, but I got letters from her mother, <laughs> her aunt, her sisters. I got four or five letters from the family wishing me well. That's funny. So, yeah. And I remember Trina all the years ago, uh, she and Michal were original members of the Bothy Band uh, way back when, and then we're doing this more sophisticated stuff with Night Noise, and one of the pieces that Trina wrote was called Three Little Nieces, mm -hmm. and Deirdre was one of those nieces, Nisa, Schoen, and yeah. Trina. Oh, what is dad gad guitar? That's when I'm playing, instead of in standard tuning, my strings are tuned to D, A, D, G, A, D. <laughs> And so it's almost open tuning. I still have to fret one string huh. to have a full chord. But it became very popularized um, through the Bothy Band and the playing of Artie McGlynn and Michal O'Donnell was the king of it. Uh -huh. And in 1981, he, uh, he showed me a few things on it and I just never left because it's got this great open, dark, deep, low, bassy sound to it. Uh -huh. So it's a great accompanying tuning and the, really nice for writing songs. And the cool thing is I play in standard guitar tuning uh -huh. so we're in different places on our guitars and the two of them together make a really nice sound. Yeah, yeah. you can really tell on the guitar, yeah. uh, double guitar songs. And it confuses all guitar players in the audience. What the heck <laughs> is she doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I know, that's so funny. People like, uh, like the great blues guy Snooks Eaglin. Nobody could ever figure out what he was doing. Uh huh. And one time I interviewed John Cleary, who played uh, uh -huh. the piano with uh, with Snooks, and he didn't know. But it had something to do with the thickness of Snooks' 
fingernails. What? And they were incredibly thick. Uh -huh. And I said, I said, can you tell me one thing about Snooks that I don't know? He said, yeah, yeah. His wife once told me that he goes through a pair of socks every week <laughs> because his toenails, toenails. are so thick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's repulsive. not really what That's I was not... hoping to learn. No, but, uh, yeah. no, but still, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, whoever thinks about Snooks, Eagle, and Toenails, I nobody. I never did. Nobody. Neither yeah, did I. And I never will again. That was, that was <laughs> a really I'm going to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> so how, how many bands are you in now, you guys? Mm. Our our band. That's, here's a band. Here's yeah, a band. Here's one band. The Portlanders. One. Portlanders. And uh, we... We've been leading song circles and sing-alongs since we were born. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a great one. Actually, we meet here once a month at Artichoke on a, a, the first Sunday, um, except we've taken the summer off. But we, we have one in our home, and uh, it's, it's the Quality Folk Dojo. <laughs> what? Oh, we okay? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's not really a band, but I mean, the other night, uh, we had 28 people show up at our house, and uh, we have uh, vocal warm-up exercises that Kate leads, and we have an opening chant, and then one traditional folk song that we sing. So those three things at the beginning. We have a snack potluck huh. first, so we know we're going to eat uh -huh. on Tuesday evenings. <laughs> we will have dinner on Tuesday. and uh, Craft service. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then we sing for an hour and a half. And uh, it's it's a wonderful band. And no, we don't rehearse. Uh -huh. um, kind of like this. Yeah, yeah. we don't <laughs> have a we don't have a set list. It's although we will go through our songbook, which I've done mm -hmm. charts for over a hundred songs in this songbook, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll choose a bunch of songs, uh, and uh, we'll try to get through most of them in the evening. But uh, it's a teaching. Yeah, because we're teaching people how to kind of improv and folk ensemble on their feet in the moment, how to listen well, how to make it beautiful. But so it's, it's about that. It, but it's a, a beautiful gathering of yeah. people and their voices. And we do it here at Artichoke, yeah. too, uh, on once the a first month. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So who is in the Portlanders these days? Oh, the one and only. These are the Portlanders. Steve Einhorn. My that's him. That's, that's him me. over there. Yeah. Myself. That's you. That's me. Uh, Mick Doherty uh -huh. uh, of Hammer Dulcimer, Flame, uh, flame Shame. Yeah. Fame. <laughs> He also he, plays upright bass. He plays upright uh -huh. bass. And sings and writes. All, and then Kevin Shea Johnson, who plays guitar and harmonica. Each one, uh, each person is a really good singer. Everybody writes songs, so most of our material is original, though we do some pretty great covers, too, and traditional songs. And among us, we probably ha play, I don't know, a dozen or 15 instruments. So you have everything from guitars and banjo and accordion and hammered dulcimer, you know, a harmonica. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really fun. We're old friends. And it was really just an excuse to be able to get to get, be sure we were getting together at uh -huh. least once a month. And uh -huh. um, it's been a packed house every show since we started it five years ago. It's really And fun. really it's what brought us back to Portland. We uh -huh. had moved away. We I had remember. lived in Olympia we and Seattle and uh, really... Uh, we came together at a, a friend's memorial, uh -huh. and uh, Kate and I realized we we got to come home. Yeah, yeah, it's been good and, to be home. There is one more band too, Kathleen. Kathleen, uh, music project I'm in with my daughter Kathy. Uh -huh. Oh right. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. that's really interesting. We're writing a lot of music, and it's a unique uh, topic and new for her. Mm -hmm. We're both right. We've been right working on a book for about 14 years too. <laughs> <laughs> Then now, all of a sudden, when we finally presented about the book, we had all these songs happening. So we made it a, a kind of a song story uh -huh. and songs and conversation about the content. And uh, so that's, we pop up at open mics mostly uh -huh. um, and are working on We did one show here that was just wonderful, and we're refining that. So Kathleen, Kathleen with a K and a C ah. is another project. Gotcha. Well, I remember when you when you came home because we came out there uh -huh. when when we were first publishing the per, the print version yeah. of Oregon Music News. Yeah, another artistic success. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and uh, you had walls that were all weren't, weren't even there yet, and some were <laughs> smashed out. And yeah, and, uh, oh my God, that's right in yeah. the house that yeah, we, we're pretty... living in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We got to get you over now that the walls are all finished. You keep saying that. You never do. Really. <laughs> I think they need repainting already. <laughs> do we have this phone number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It automatically erases every time you put it in the phone. Well, I loved it when you got in touch when you heard we were coming back because you asked us where the parade was going to be. Yeah. Did I say that? <laughs> you did. I'm glad I did. <laughs> that was a good question. It was really. Well, we moved fun. in. Yeah. And uh, it's a great house. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, I have a little goldfish pond in the back. Ah. I bought. A bag, you know, my grandsons and I went to Pets on Broadway, and we bought oh, yeah. eight for a dollar. And the, <laughs> the guy at the counter says, these are not for pet. These are to feed to bigger fish. These are food. Oh. And they're now, like, bass size. They all have names. And, yeah, they all have, <laughs> have names. And yeah. Steve is their yeah. father, yes. Yeah. And uh, what do you name fish? Kate's lying. They don't have names. There's baby I, they're Huey. They're just like eating Dewey machines. And Louie. They, they hear my feet shuffling out there in the morning, and I come over to the pond, and they're like their, their lips mouths start are, going like that. You know. Did you say baby Huey? I did. Is she, is she, she's she's telling the truth. Yeah. You named it baby Huey. No. Yes, she did. She did. Well, oh, baby did. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. All of them. <laughs> they all have names. I call them by name. <laughs> That's funny. And we have potatoes growing in the garden and all kinds of you named herbs. The and I named every potato, Tom, and I'm going to. very compassionate. I'll send you the names <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we have the big group photo. <laughs> Do you dress them up? No. Yeah. yeah. Remember Mr. Potato Head? Oh, yeah. Sure. There you go. My favorite. But when it became a plastic <laughs> potato, that was, that was, it's that not was, as good. No, you have to use a real spoon. I lost, I lost, faith, I lost right. faith in Milton Bradley. Back <laughs> <then>. <laughs> Milton, yeah, Uncle Milty. Uncle Milty. All right. Well, um, uh, what, you, you, so what? Any any other any other gigs that you can tell us about where that you would? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we developed this class uh -huh. years and years ago. It's called Ukuleleans. Oh, yeah. And it started at Artichoke Music. It was, you know, hey, mister, how do you play that thing? And I was, you know, showing people how to play their first three chords on the uke. And then we started teaching in the, one of the teaching rooms. And uh, when we sold the store, we bought an RV and we went on the road yeah. with a, a book that we had published, the Ukulelean Songbook. Mm -hmm. It was a beginning guide to playing. And uh, the Kala Ukulele Company generously gifted us 24 really nice travel size ukuleles. Uh -huh. And I bought duffel bags and we traveled all over the country teaching this class at music stores and libraries and schools. And, uh, and we continue to do that. We were just mm -hmm. out in Hood River at the Hood River Library. Mm -hmm. We had about 40 people show up. You know, the librarians always, they put out about five or six chairs. Mm -hmm. We think about half a dozen people will come and yeah. You Seventy people. Show set, up. We've had out in Tillamook, <laughs> Oregon, on a Tuesday at two p.m. We had seventy people show up, and it's one hour, four chords, five songs, and we always ask the the crowd how many of you have never played a string instrument, and a good third to a half of them raise their hands, and they leave playing music. On a uke. Are are they less intimidated with a ukulele than they are with a, a, a full guitar? Is that it? And they're less intimidated with us because we're a lot of fun. <laughs> we make them laugh. I yeah. think laughing is yeah. the most important. But yes, ingredient. it is a very gentle instrument. The laughter, yeah. our approach, but it's only four strings. They're yeah. nylon strings. Very gentle sound. Yeah. It's an amazing instrument for teaching and, and often we we don't talk theory uh, they don't have to tune up show we have them they're pre-tuned it's yeah. like okay we've got one hour oh if my dog has fleas I mean, yeah what else do you have to do you know <laughs> dan tony <laughs> you got to go like this too there you go. how to hold it what the parts are but yeah. mainly getting them singing and showing them it's not so hard uh -huh. and it's, they don't know what's what hit them by the time they're done they've done half a dozen songs they're smiling mm -hmm. Even the grumpiest ones have a good time, so it's, it's oh. really fun. We'll be at Sherwood Library on the 16th of September, and then we're coming back to Lake Oswego uh, sometime in, Oct I forget, October, I think it is, or maybe it's, yeah. I forget when. It's all on our website at qualityfolkdojo.com, right on the calendar page. All right. And more to come.
That's yeah. great. Yeah. And we've it's... got some shows coming up, too. Mm hmm Show. Show. The Portlanders will be here at Artichoke Music. We still have a few seats left, folks, so get them while they're hot. Uh, September 7th. Saturday, September 7th. Uh -huh. Yep. And all of our shows for the Portlanders are listed, and you can get tickets for right through spring of 2020 because they do tend to fill. And I know Portlanders don't really like to get tickets in advance, but they also get frustrated if it's sold out and they can't get a seat. So we decided to go ahead and just put them all up. Go ahead, fill your calendar, and see you there. Portlanders are going to complain no matter what. <laughs> oh, they're still pretty With a good. smile on their face. Yeah, but, yeah. But, <laughs> hey, it's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that's human nature, perhaps, huh? In Portland, it is. Yeah. I don't know. We've been a lot of different places, and coming home to Portland, it still felt um, gentle, tolerant. I mean, I know and it's passive getting... passive aggressive. It's hard and, and very passive aggressive, yeah, with a smile. And, and getting more aggressive aggressive. Well, yeah, well, yeah, it used to be at a four-way stop. You'd wait. It, it could be like 20 minutes by the time because everybody's being so polite. Yeah. Now it's getting a little horn honky and, yeah. you know, a little more well, intense. Yeah. People from the East Coast moved, moved here. That's know, right. So. I did that. So 78. Did we yeah. all did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I what just is? want to say yes. that... It's so wonderful to be in this mm -hmm. place called Artichoke Music yeah. that began, the woman that started it, Judith Cook Tucker, is still talking to Bob Howard yeah. on Facebook. She started it back in 71. Jeez. And it's had several homes and uh, several people standing at the helm. And uh, we are just so delighted and happy that Bob Howard, because you got to have one guy, gal, guy, person who yeah. says, we, we got to do this. We got to go talk to the city fathers and mothers, and we got to get permits and all right. do all that. And he was willing to do all that uh -huh. and found this location and found the loan money and found another home for this, this wonderful entity known as Artichoke Music. Yeah. And it's a, a music center it's and yeah. music so i mean i knew it when i was 12 that i wanted to play the guitar mm -hmm. and uh i just know how important it is for people to be making music now mm -hmm. in any way that they possibly can even if it's just turning on the radio and singing along but you know there are all these great choirs and choruses all over now and uh plenty of ways for people to get into making music and uh we're just so thrilled that this place still exists under a roof. Well, yeah. so. we're, we're, we're happy that you, you guys still exist. Yeah, Yay. me too. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> and Good especially job. without a gigantic uh, appendix. Yeah. yeah. I'm anyway. still waiting to get the photos from the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Hey, thank you for coming in. Oh, thank thanks, you so man. much. And you going to say one more thing? I was just going to also say that. Oh, certainly. Well, just I'm piggybacking on what you said, Artichoke became a nonprofit right after we sold it too. Not that yeah. it ever made any money, but the, <laughs> but it takes a lot of patience to run a, a nonprofit because everybody has to. You have to have consensus, mm -hmm. and people don't agree. And um, the leadership here has is very patient and kind and compassionate and has a lot of experience. Uh, doing that sort of thing, and like I, I'm a little faster at the trigger yeah. with my temperament and I just admire that patience and calmness so much and the kindness that happens here and so it still feels like home mm -hmm. and it's always good to be here and I'm so grateful yeah. for that. Yeah, Bob has been very welcoming to us. Yeah, oh good. You know, we're, we're having yeah. a good time. And yeah. he knows how to pronounce the word croissant. Does he? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Portlanders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's all. That's uh, all we're having a good time. It's what else do you need? <laughs> that's right. We're all together. We have a place to be. It's the clubhouse. Come on down. <laughs> uh, okay. What are you going to play? Barbershop? Yeah. Let's do. What is, what is that song? This is one of Steve's. Unless you want to play that first song. Actually, you know what I want to play? Do if you believe. No. I, I think because... Uh, these are my mountains. Really? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? 
No. Okay. <laughs> this is the real case. Is it them? <laughs> no, I don't want to do that one. Well, why did, you, why did you ask if you didn't want to know? You're, well, wit just, you're witnessing, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Yes, musical marriage. How about, um, okay, these are my mountains to be nice. They could yeah. sing along on the radio. Only because when we were in Ireland, well, Kate learned this song in <laughs> at her, her first visit to Ireland back in 1981. She learned this from a shy farmer. She likes to say a shy farmer named Pat Quinn, yep. who never came into town, nope. but his wife was having a baby that day. Yep. So the men go down to the pub while the woman is at the doctor delivering the, the blessed event. And, and uh, so she tells this great story before we sing the song, okay? The night before we left for Portland, this, this last visit just a few weeks ago, we're walking down the street. We haven't seen or heard from Pat Quinn since 81. We're walking down the street with our friend Quilcha Brannock, our dear friend. We walk by this doorway, and he says, Kate, Steve, back up. And we backed up. And there, standing in the doorway, Tom, is Pat Quinn. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette, looking like he might have had a pint or two. Pink cheeks, blue eyes, <laughs> a little rounder. Yeah, and Kate reminds him that She's Kate Power, who asked him to sing. Uh, so back in January. Yeah, of 19, you know, in 81, and 31 years ago. And meanwhile, he's counting on his fingers. Well, you know, you're right. My son is 31 years old. <laughs> it was that actually was, 1988. Uh, uh, yeah. Was it 88 anyway? <laughs> so I thought it'd be nice to sing These Are My Mountains. Yeah, we got a great picture of him, too, uh, put on the website. Okay. It's a great song, and we've taught it to a lot of people in Oregon because anybody that lives here understands what this song is about. For fame and for fortune I wandered the earth But now I return to the land of my birth I brought back my treasure but only to find they're less than the pleasures I first left behind. For these are my mountains, and this is my glen. The days of my child. I'll see them again No land will ever tempt me Nor far will I roam For these are my mountains And I'm going home Just been by the roadside and I'm going back The lark overhead Wings a welcoming cry No longer the droll plight Once more I will see Sure it's there that my heart For these are my mountains, and this is my glen, the days of my childhood, I'll see them again. No land will ever tempt me, nor far will I roam. For these are my mountains, and I'm going home. Kind faces will meet me here at Artichoke Music and welcome me in. And oh, how This 
night round the fireside Sad songs will be sung At last I'll be speaking In my old mother tongue For these are my mountains Ooh. And this is my glen the days of my childhood I'll see them again Ooh, No land will ever tempt me Nor far will I roam For these are my mountains And I'm going For these are my mountains, and I'm going home. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us, Tom. Thank, Thank you, Tom. You. What a pleasure. <laughs>